Toronto, Canada. It is Saturday, June the 25th, 2011. Exactly one year since Toronto was put under siege into a police state and the Canadian uh, Charter of Rights and Freedoms was put under suspension for a couple of days. Over 1,100 people arrested without any due process and without reason. Today, Canadians are getting together in Toronto to celebrate their freedom and to voice their opinions, once again calling for a full public inquiry to hold those responsible accountable and to make sure that those mass violations never happen again. Canada's freedom is under attack and we have to stand up in order to defend it and make sure that we don't lose it.
on June 26 and 27, 2010, one billion dollars of taxpayer money was spent on 20,000 police officers who turned the city of Toronto of charges have been dropped because of course they were entirely without merit but our spirits are not broken thousands of people who never protested before came out after the g20 weekend in rallies to defend our civil liberties and today we gather here on the lawn of queens park the so-called designated protest zone where many of us were tear gassed brutalized and arrested by g20 forces to say we have not forgotten and we may have been beaten arrested and told to stay home. But one year later, we are still here fighting for justice in our communities. We are here to demand a full and independent inquiry into all levels of decision making. We want to know how the Special Investigations Unit was operating. We also, uh, and who was calling the shots, and how to stop this tragedy of justice from ever being repeated. It is important to open this rally by recognizing that this is a traditional land of the Mississauga of the New Credit First Nations, and we have called upon Gary Sue to open this event. Thank you. I've uh, been given the baffle to uh, do a, uh, a welcoming here, and uh, we use this welcoming uh, prayer for uh, generations and generations. I'm not the first ones to hear it, but uh, it's something that has to be done in recognition of the indigenous people that are here on this first day. Bojo, Ogajige Hikinin Indigenakas, Magazine Dodam, Mississauga and Dao, and Credit Dunji, Namkage Men, Wasa Kabinjabam, Kunishki Babigu, Kadeka Zimwat, We the Bimchanam, We Dope Nishkan, Asia Pejigo, Bakade, Asia Pejigo, we uh, this is prayer says welcome. You've come far. We've waited long. Come and partake of the same food that allies are hungry. And sometimes it's those words that need to be said when we have these rallies. I don't know how many times I've been confronted with you have the right to remain silent. I know I have the right to remain silent, but I refuse to. I don't have to. When we, instead of protesting and throwing us in jail, they should listen to what their people have to give to them. There are our elected leaders. I didn't elect them, but somebody did. They went. And I hope that this uh, rally uh, wakes up the minds of these people on this great Turtle Island to what they're missing out. Be which. The OFL was actively involved in organizing for the people's first rally during the G20 and threw its weight behind the call for a public inquiry that would kick cause heads to roll from the individual officers right up to Stephen Harper. Please help me in welcome him to Ryan. I'm particularly proud to be standing here because the Ontario Federation of Labour, along with the CLC and Amnesty International, Canadian Federation of Students, Council of Canadians. We all got together a year ago and mobilized a massive demonstration in this province and we started right here on this lawn. And we were led to believe that Queen's Park was going to be a designated protest area. So we asked people to bring their children, to bring their friends and their family down here so as we can have this protest and we'll have this march. And now a year later I want to know who's responsible for making the decision to send the cops to Queen's Park to beat the crap on citizens. And we've listened for a year now. We've listened to the charade. We've listened to the code of silence. The blue thin line closing the ranks around the cops in this city. You let us down, Chief Blair. You did not protect the citizens right. of this community, right. Chief Blair. Right. You were behind the scenes, Chief Blair, covering up for those cops who beat the crap out of our citizens. And because of that tone of silence that you engaged in, we are demanding here today that you step down, Chief Blair. It's time you left. It's time you left. 
doesn't matter what paper you look at. Toronto Star, Toronto Sun, Globe and Mail, Hamilton Spectator, Front Page News, Front Page News, Chief Blair and Dalton McGinty and Stephen Harper. This is not going away. A year ago, 73% of the public said they supported the police actions. Today, it's only 23%. A massive change. The General Council of the Canadian Civil Liberties Association. Please help me in welcoming Emily. One year ago, at this very spot, began the violent disruption of peaceful protests, which was followed by mass arrests, arbitrary detention, unwarranted searches, kettling, unreasonable seizures of property, abusive behavior, anti protesters' rhetoric and finally, a serious systemic problem in bringing all of this to light. Sure. I'm here to ask you to demand a public inquiry. We need one that is independent, comprehensive, and public. A truth commission is what we need. It's dangerous for our democracy because we're letting a culture of impunity develop. Sure. cannot be left unanswered because it sends the message that the ends justify the means. That police can simply ask for forgiveness instead of working within the law. Because the city has been wounded, we need a process of truth to, to go on. We need a process of truth finding so that we can heal. True leadership would be to recognize that this process is needed now, that amends must be made and commitments to better and more democratic policing can need to be acted upon. Since the beginning, we have asked for a public inquiry, compensation for people who were violated, for an apology, and for limits on the powers to arrest or breach of the peace. We need to do this. We need to do this for the strength of our democracy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Joseph Boyden, who for a recent CCLA event was asked to comment on the meaning of democracy. The Canadian democracy reminds me of one of my most regrettable weaknesses. It is inherently lazy and must be constantly harangued to get working. I'm asking you, let's not have a lazy democracy. Let's have a fit democracy. Saturday, June the 26th, I was attacked by the police and their representatives here at Queen's Park. My left leg was ripped off by a white male who I cannot describe as my glasses were in my mouth and I could not see him clearly. The, the police ordered me to hop. I said to them with my glasses in my mouth, I can't! They said, you asked for it, and started to drag me away. Here's a picture of, of, of what they were doing to me just before they dragged me away. My glasses are in my mouth. I am screaming in pain through my teeth, and the police do not seem to care. Many police are standing around, and they allowed this to happen. One officer is holding my leg and my walking sticks. There is a shackled person behind me. An officer in a gas mask is leaning on something, and a horse is looking at us. They will not remove my handcuffs. They give me an old wheelchair without a cushion to sit on. I am held until 10 o'clock on Sunday evening. When I am released, they return my leg. They cannot locate my two walking sticks, my glasses, about $33 in cash, and a whistle. They said they would look for the items and contact me. I was never charged with any offense. To this day, I do not know why I was dragged away from Queen's Park. It still feels like I was kidnapped. There was about $33 in cash in my pocket. The police took this and never returned it to me. I, ne I, I never received an explanation of what happened to my walking sticks, my glasses, my whistle, and my money. Please throw my property away. Did an officer take my walking sticks home as a trophy? Did they spend my money for beers at a bar? Ho, ho! Bill Blair has got to go! Hey, hey! Ho, ho! Bill Blair has got to go!
got to go. Hey, hey. Oh, ho. Oh. She's a folk singer here from here in Toronto who is inspired by, by resistance. Help me in welcoming uh, Lynn Harrison. Thanks everybody for coming out. This is Some of you 
may know me as the Rogue Page. Others know me by the title that Minister Jason Kenney came up with, Lefty Coop. We are here today because we know the real threat to our security is Harper's conservative agenda. Last summer, that security threat was unleashed in the streets of Toronto. That security threat broke bones and tried to crush people's dignity. That security threat stripped us of our civil liberties and illegally rounded up more than a thousand of us. That security threat did its dirty police work in the service of an agenda that goes against the values of, the, of most of the people in this country, an austerity agenda that puts more guns in the streets and sends soldiers to fight wars abroad, that cuts social services and undermines workers' rights, and that makes grabs at everything for un Indigenous people's lands, for control over women's bodies, and for the public goods of this country. The power of the people in the streets is greater than the power of any government. Let's continue to demand a public inquiry. Let's continue to demand the dropping of all remaining charges. Let's join together in the streets to fight for social justice and to stop Harper.